My name is Roy Schwass. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. I train at F1 Fight Team. Rory Swass, he's everything they say he is. I saw him fight at Cage Aggression Giving Back and a few fights online. His ground game is everything they say it is. I'm really excited to test myself against a guy of his caliber. I noticed that uh, he likes to rush and take people down, which if he tries that, it's probably not going to work out too well for him because I notice one thing when he does get a takedown, he likes to lay on you. It's not gonna fly with me. When we step in that cage, it's time to go. I'm not a trash talker in any way, shape, or form. I wanna go in there, do what we're there to do, and shake hands afterwards. Not really sure there's anything I could say that would change his mind about me, whatever his opinion of me may be. I would just say, you're in for a real fight. You'll find out when you step in there. Making his way to the cage in our second fight of the night here at Cage Aggression 15, Rory Gumby Schwass out of Alito, Illinois, representing F1 Fight Team. Getting a chance to talk to him. Um, you know, Rory is someone who isn't a stranger to the Cage Aggression octagon at all. We've seen him be involved in some, you know, incredible fights and stuff before. But talking with him this go around, he said that he hadn't had much of a camp. And hearing that, it made me a little bit nervous, but he also said that he was going to make it work and try to, you know, just rely on some of the things that he's done in his past. Now, initially, I hear that, and I'm like, well, that makes me a little bit nervous about somebody if, you, if you're, you know, downplaying the camp that you have. But knowing how good his jujitsu is, knowing how good he is on the ground, I think he might be the type of fighter who can literally just roll out of bed, submit somebody, and walk out the octagon. And I wonder if that's what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I'd be more nervous if this is his first fight and he didn't have a training camp uh, behind him. But having seen him, uh, and pretty much he looks like a fighter that has a plan going in, but almost abandons ship and, you know, no pun intended to his opponent. <laughs> but, uh, you know, abandons it and goes to fights. And that's what we're going to see today. And uh, it's a great second fight of the night. And uh, very excited for it. Making his way to the cage, Michael Battleship. I mean, I said his name like Battleship. Michael <laughs> Battleship. <laughs> Out of Henry, Illinois, and representing Walker's American Martial Arts. Love the nickname already. Oh, yeah. Battleship is a tough name. So, Battleship versus Gumby. That, that would make it seem like it would be sort of a one-sided affair going to a ship. But, man, I already know what Rory can do, so I definitely don't expect that. But... Having a chance to talk to, to Michael before the fight today, he was saying that he recognizes how dangerous Rory's ground game is. So he was very humble. He understood what his opponent is. And when you know someone's dangerous on the ground, you're going to do everything you can to make sure that the fight doesn't go there. Our second bout of the evening is scheduled for three 
three minute rounds in the caged aggression amateur welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 174 and one half pounds. He trains with the F1 fight team and is joining us from Alito, Illinois, Rory Gumby Schwab. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 172 and one half pounds. He trains with Walker's American Martial Arts and is joining us from Henry, Illinois, Michael Battle Shin. We are ready for our second Friday night here at Cage Aggression 15, dedication. Rory Schwass versus Michael Ship. Ship in the black and red shorts, Rory Schwass in the gray and black. This is where the, the chess match starts. So who's who's going to try to go to the ground? We know that's what Schwass wants to do, but Ships wants to keep it up as much as he can. So is he going to be able to do that, or is he going to end up on the ground? That's love the, the, the inside sort yeah. of, you know, strategy of these types of fights. Both fighters using kicks to, to feel out, too, which I, I love seeing. Nice counter kick by Ship there. Smart way to start off a fight, too, with kicks like that. And that's a big thud right there, too. A ship lands a, a shot of his own. Schwarz definitely shrugging off those kicks initially. Those definitely add up as the fight goes on. Ship showing some fast hands right there, too. Yeah, he got about three or four off right there in a second or two. This looks like Ship is also just kind of trying to corner him back into the cage, too, and stop doing a little bit of stalking, which isn't good to see. You can tell that Schwab sort of took his time to, to get back up. He has no problem being down there and would probably like to entice Ship to come down and join him. Right, good head movement from Schwab too to get out of the way of some of those shots. Ship definitely has some, yeah, cross too. really, really nice cross, nice really nice speed on those punches too. Schwab's trying to mix it up a little bit with his unorthodox style. It's a smart thing to do with somebody who looks technically crisp like Strip is. Uh, come at him with some, some different uppercuts and odd uh, shots. Catch him off guard. Uh, just like that body shot that Schwaz just landed. Definitely caught Ship off guard. And especially with Schwaz talking about how he didn't have that much of a camp, he definitely looks like he's in the best shape that I've seen him in. I will say, too, that Ship looks really comfortable in there. He's very relaxed. Uh, lands a couple of shots again to Schwaz. Looks relaxed, like, you know, not, not a care in the world, man. Just completely honed in and zoned in on his fight. Nice front kick by Schwaz right there. It's rounds like that that may not be, you know, as exciting to the fans, but I thought that was a really good first round uh, for both fighters. You know? Yeah, no, no one was sitting back. No one was, you know, you, you sort of just have those those filling out type rounds sometimes, and that really wasn't one of those. It was uh, both guys trying to, to to go forward with their game plans. Kind of surprising to see Schwaz want to stay up. Hasn't went for a takedown yet, but you got to believe that's coming at some point. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, like I said, as soon as as soon as he has a chance to kind of close that distance, grab and take him down, I have to feel like he's going to do that. And then it's a whole different fight. Here we go for round two. Bruce Allen is the referee. There's some, some bigger kicks now coming from Schwaz. Ship returns with a couple of shots of his own. 
Schiff definitely looks comfortable with uh, being a counter puncher after Schwartz sort of comes in with a kick or a punch. Schiff's using his, his length too. He's punching long, really getting his whole arm out there and trying to land at the end of it. Even those those sort of pawing jabs that he's doing right now. Those are effective, especially when you have an opponent who you believe is going to try to come in at some point. Shift doing a good job listening to his corner to, to circle and not just go straight back. So very aware. I mean, it, it's quite enough in here that it, that's a definite advantage to the, the fighters tonight that uh, they can able they're able to hear their corners and really listen to them. Oh, very nice shot there by Schwartz. He's dazed. He's dazed. Schwartz knows it too. He took two big shots. Three shots right there. That one's behind the, the ear. I'm surprised he's still standing after that. <laughs> Great I knew it was coming. Takedown. <laughs> My God, that was an awesome takedown. <laughs> Something you don't see a whole lot of. I think during all the times that we've been doing case aggression, I don't think I've seen one of those before. Yeah, it's a highlight takedown. For oh, sure. definitely, and it's and it's something that you expect from Schwaz, knowing how good he is on the ground. Now he has the fight exactly where he wants it. He's and already dazed his opponent say, a little bit too. Three or four big shots. I mean, knee buckling shots. Her, I mean, that couldn't have went up any more perfect for Schwaz. Here's where that, that, that Gumby nickname comes into play, too. Trying Sully to walking that leg up, up the back. and Maybe trying to pull it over his head for one of my favorite Gogo Platas. Maybe if I just say it, Gogo Plata, <laughs> it'll happen. And it's, it's one of those things that you don't see a lot of, but you know that Rory can do it. You know that he can do it. Incredible flexibility right there, too. I'm just watching it right now. It's, it is amazing. He's trying to sneak it under there. He's going to pull that head back. It's a tough move, too. Oh, almost. Almost. Slowly working for it. Yeah, Ship is going to have to be active right now, and that's one thing he really isn't doing too much of. Might get saved by the bell a little bit here, too. Ship doing a good job of keeping his head the other way, too. Looking the other way. If he would have turned his head, it would have been over. And it's always tough when you when you've been dazed. You know someone's going for a submission on you. How exactly do you continue to stay active? There so, has to be so many things going through your head that you don't know exactly what technique you want to use to get out. Do you need to be calm? Do you need to be you relax. You just relax and let and let your body, you know, kind of find the move. Let, let let the other person slip into it. Make that small little error where you capitalize on it. Which style are we gonna get this round? We saw some hands and uh, some standing standing stuff from shipping around one. Some jujitsu action from Schwass in round two. So yeah, it's it's whoever right now. I would think that ship's got to be uh, careful not to get hit again. He's, he, he's felt Schwarz's power. There it is again. Two times. Two times. It doesn't. It's going right for the same exact same thing that he did before. Right. And you, you have to believe that, I don't know if his corner told him or if he felt this way, but he realized that at the end of that last round, that if he had maybe another 15, 20 seconds, he'd be able to get it. Right. So he's going to start it early this round yeah. and see if he can secure it. And that's what I said. It, and, he, and he may be in this position for the next two minutes, really trying to get that under his neck again. I love it, man. You just don't see this, this type of jiu-jitsu too much anymore. I feel like this is the, you know, the evolution of the sport as well. We, we need to start seeing some different, some different moves, some different finishing moves, and it's, it's great to see people try for it now. But Schwaz, yep. is, as excuse me, Ship's hanging in there though. Yeah, great job of him by staying active and keeping his body moving. I know early on or in the last round, you know, when he was going for that submission, he kept moving or he wasn't moving a whole lot, and he sort of just let Schwaz do what he wanted to do. But this time, he started moving and was able to wiggle his way Making out. It hard, yeah. I mean, they're, they're 
sweating now too, so it's, it's hard. It's going to be harder than it was you know, at the end of last round to, to finish that move. And those heel kicks that Schwaz is doing right now, those I call them bruise kicks. I mean, those are going to leave a mark, and you might not see it right now, but I guarantee you tomorrow at this time he's going to be feeling those. Up, kind of blast up out of there. Uh, separate. Maybe if he wants to go standing, let it stand. I mean, it's he's got to keep moving, keep active though, because Lori is getting quite uh, quite gumby gumby ish in there. There's a lot of limbs flying around right now. You can't and, really tell who's is who. Right, and that's the thing with jujitsu. Right. Got a triangle real quick. Can't quite tell, you know, where the neck is. It's, at the inverted triangle. If Rory can uh, roll over and finish it out of, out of the side of his stomach. Rory's ability right now to, to hammer those elbows in there while keeping pressure with your limbs, that's that's pretty good. It's, he's almost he's it's like ship is sliding out. Yeah, it slid out. His arm was almost was trapped in there too, so it was that was that was a, a very nice move from Schwartz to be able to, to lock that in in that moment. A big, big up to the ship for staying uh, calm and getting out of that hard one to judge, man. Yeah, that's a difficult one. And, I, you know, you have to sort of give credit and points for um, throwing on a submission attempt, but you also should give points and credit for someone who is able to get out of it, too. So and that's, that's one thing. Every judge is different. Do you judge more on the escape? Do you judge more on the attempt? Uh, They're both pretty active, so, you know, so you never know what, which way it's going to go. This one is a, is a, to, a coin flipper to me. Coin toss. Yeah, it's always tough. Glad I'm not an official. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges' scorecard for our decision. Judge number three scores this contest 30-27. And judges number two and one score this contest 29-28. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision... Rory Schwab!